Greetings! Now, as some people already know, I'm a bit of what you might call a watch nerd. Or some people call it a whiz, which stands for Watch Idiot Savant. Now, seeing as this is true, I do have a fairly small, by some standards, response collection. And I figured I'd show you some of my, uh, some of my pieces. Now, this doesn't include my Rolex Submariner. It's the older version, the LV, with the aluminum bezel. So it's the green aluminum bezel. Uh, it's pretty nice. And I actually have it down at the bank in my safe deposit box right now. But I'm going to show you all the other ones I have. Now, the first one, and this is, this is my favorite one to wear in the winter, because it's kind of Christmassy, Christmassy, and it's got a white dial, so it doesn't seem to feel quite as cold as some of my other watches. Let me tilt this a little bit. Um, that is my Vostok Amphibia. And this gives me kind of, this is, this is kind of a Soviet design from the 60s. And one thing about this watch is that the crown here is what some people call a bottle cap crown. It's not fixed to the stem. So as you can see it, maybe you can't, there we go. It wiggles around quite a bit. See it rocks and stuff. And that's a good thing because it's not exerting constant pressure on the stem, uh, which can cause some problems. Another unique feature is that the back has a separate threaded part and case back. So when you're screwing the back on and you tighten this ring, you're not squishing the O-ring around. You're just pushing, and instead of an O-ring, it has a square, nice thick square gasket. So as you screw in the back, it just compresses that gasket nice and flat. It doesn't kind of twist it, which is what damages O-rings and causes some watches to leak. So, let me screw the crown back down there. It does have a rotating diver's bezel. It doesn't work too great, but it's, it's kind of hard to turn. But it doesn't click, it just moves smoothly in either direction. Uh, and it's got this dial with the nice, nice green numbers on, them, on it. And the strap I have it on is a bond, authentic bond, NATO, authentic meaning. Uh, a lot of people think just a gray stripe or gray with the red, but the authentic one was green with red. And the green kind of matches the numbers. It's got a red, if you can't, I don't know if you can see, it's got a red second hand, which is pretty nice. So, for, for winter, that's my favorite watch. Now, for summer, especially for the beach, I have a 100th anniversary Seiko Monster. And you can see, I think you can see, the beautiful blue color on the bezel of this thing. And I have it on a shark mesh bracelet. Um, I don't know, I just really like the Monster. And it's got a nice gold crown. And on the shark mesh, it's kind of cool. And it's a, like I said, it's a nice beach watch. This is backwards here, so I gotta move left to make it go right. Um, so it's a nice summer watch for, you know, whatever. It's nice and waterproof and everything. Now my first mechanical wrist watch, not counting a piece of crap Hamilton scuba, which I returned, is a Victorinox Ambassador Day Date. Now, one thing I really like is to have a watch that has the day of the week. I, I can never remember and I miss it if it doesn't have that. And I have this on a Stingray Skin Bracelet, which I wish this camera would focus a little closer. But that's, uh, that's Stingray Hide that this bracelet is made of. Now, I have a Seiko Monster. That I are uh, not a Seiko Monster. I have a Casio G Shock this way up. Casio G Shock, and I've aged it. So I took a, a polishing wheel in my Dremel, like the cotton polishing wheel, and some polishing compound. And I, I made the case look nice and really old and well worn. Uh, I think uh, Adam Savage would, would appreciate that. And I left some polishing compound in some of the lettering and in these little dimples or whatever they are. 
And that gives it, a, it's a little reddish. That's kind of a cool color. This may be Mars dust or something. So uh, that's my watch. Oh, and I got the special little adapters so I could put it on a NATO type or a nylon strap. Just slides on there. You just hold on there. So it's a little bit unique compared to just your average one. I didn't like the way it looked. It looked too plastic even when it was new. But I like the kind of aged look. Now this one, this one's quartz. So if you're a mechanical watch snob, you may or may not like it. And it's also maybe a little bit young for me now. But it's a Tracer Extreme Sport. And it's tritium. So it glows. You can see the little tritium tubes on the hands. So it glows nicely uh, all night. And it's nice and accurate. It's very practical. On this bracelet, though, it is quite heavy. So I have a strap I can put it on. It's just a cheap Kevlar strap from Amazon. Uh, and it's fairly well worn. But uh, it, goes, it goes pretty nicely with it. But the kind of the uh, university or Ivy League font type of numbers on there. Uh, and just the general look of it. I think, like I said, I think it's maybe a little bit young for me. Um, and it's bead blasted finish. It's got some laser engraving on the back, which is not very nice because it's kind of rough. And I, I rubbed it with some different, some wood and some leather to try to smooth it down a little bit. And it's better than it was, but you can still feel it, which I don't like especially. But uh, it, it's a pretty nice watch. And uh, I don't have any sentimental attachment to it. So if it got stolen or something, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But it was fairly expensive. So, those are the watches. Those are my kind of uh, normal set of watches that I usually wear, other than my Rolex. Uh, like I said, that's in the, in the bank right now. So, I guess that's about it. Over and out.